Well, as we think about what we have experienced over the past weekend, there were a lot of things that went on. We uh, had a very full weekend, started with a, a board meeting that went uh, all day on Thursday. So Wednesday night, board members are coming in and, and arriving on campus and, and being here to participate in conversations about the governance of the school. And, and we have a great board, we really do. We have a tremendous board of directors who um, are committed to the school and, and very sacrificially serve Clearwater Christian College. And, and I appreciate them so very much. Then, uh, of course, we go from that, and that's a full day. You know, you start Wednesday night all the way through Thursday, and, and I'm getting home about 10 o'clock on Thursday night after a dinner. And then we move, move right into Friday, which was our golf tournament. And again, God was just so gracious to us. Uh, uh, the advancement department, the team of people who worked there under Terry Wilde's leadership, uh, Dan Waring and so on, looks like uh, right at the moment we are going to realize about $92,000 from that tournament. And so we're just so grateful, again, to how God takes care of us and provides uh, for that and through that. And, and the, the, the people that, what God is doing is he's moving the hearts of people to want to share their resources with us. And so what do we do? In, in response to that, we say, thank you, Lord. Just thank you so much for moving in their hearts to have an affection and an affiliation with Clearwater and to do that in such a way that they, they open up their wallets and they, they sign the checks and, and give them to us so that we can have a scholarship program that all of you in one way or another benefit from. And that's really what the purpose of the golf tournament is and was to raise that kind of money that we can distribute it on the front end and then through the course of your, your time with us. So we're working hard at that and, and I'm so grateful to the advancement department. Then, of course, we, we wrap up all of that, and it's, uh, it's evening, and, and we then move into the events. And, of course, while we're in the board meeting and golf tournament, uh, uh, our teams are in their locations and competing at uh, various levels in order to make their way to the Saturday games. And then it was just a joy for me to, to be there and to see some of that activity and then to interna interact with a number of the families and friends who were there. So my question is, and my my direction of heart is simply this. How do we celebrate all of this? Do we pat ourselves on the back and say, man, we, we're a great school and we just uh, thank the Lord for, or maybe we don't even say we thank the Lord for, we just, hey, we're a great school. Look at the teams. Look at the banners. Aren't we great? Why don't you come to be part of this with us? And you can perhaps contribute to putting a banner up in our gymnasium at some point along the way. But we don't want to do it that way. We want, to, we want to do it in another way. And my question, of course, is how can we do this in the most God-glorifying kind of a way? As I've had opportunity to interact with some students over the, uh, on a weekly basis over the issue of leadership, and we were talking last night, and, and one of the things that we were looking at as we were looking at the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, we're realizing that leaders in biblical history led by casting creating a worldview of a big God. And so, for example, when you listen, listen to this as I read Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. Here's Nehemiah saying, when I saw their fear. Now here's, here's the leader, Nehemiah, amidst his people. When I saw their fear, I rose and spoke to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people. Do not be afraid of them. Remember, the Lord is great and awesome. And fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. So what, what does Nehemiah do at that moment? He casts this vision. He, he casts this, or he makes this proclamation. He reminds these people who are in fear, our God is big. Our God is awesome. And let me lead you with that kind of a perspective, that kind of a mindset. So again, how can we do this? How can we celebrate the goodness of God? We're not fearful we're happy, we're rejoicing, we're grateful, we're thankful, our hearts are just uh, overflowing with God's goodness to us. So how do we do it in the most God-glorifying manner? I think about 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So we're, we're eating, we're drinking, we're competing, and we're doing it to the glory of God. We're doing it in a way that, that acknowledges and casts out before us the reputation of who our God is and how great he is and how wonderful he is. 
So let's let the scriptures remind us of how great God is. Let's remember how small we are and how wonderful God is to us. That's what I would like to accomplish. And how do we do that? Let's appropriately apply some key big God text of scripture to the context of our national championships that we're able to enjoy. My mind immediately goes, and again, I hope we're doing this appropriately and doing it in a way that really does make the application. How can we glorify God? How can we celebrate these victories in the most God-glorifying way? As the people were making their way into the land that God was giving them, Moses said this, but you should remember the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth that he may confirm his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So he's reminding the Israelites, you're doing well, you're prospering, just remember one thing, bottom line. The bottom line of your bottom line is this, it's God who's giving you the strength to make this wealth and to have this prosperity. So bottom line for us, if I could say it that way, is simply this, the bottom line, God's, God's the one who's working in and through all of this to bring glory and fame to himself. I think about how the Lord is, is a man of war. You know, and I, I think about, you know, you think about athletic competition, you think about the battle, you think about the, uh, the, the uh, uh, you know, the, just the challenge that there is on the field or that there is on the court. And of course, I'm reminded again, and the Lord reminds us, for whatever battle of life we are in, that he is the great man of war. Exodus 14, the Lord God is the great king who will fight for his people. The Lord will fight for you only, you only need to be still. And then turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 18. This is a song that Moses sang as the Israelites stood on the other side of the parted Red Sea. And here is Moses leading these people in worship. Now you might think, oh, well, all that happened was the waters parted and the people walked across. What's the big deal? It was a big deal, wasn't it? It's was the most redemptive moment in Old Testament history. The most significant event that took place. And here Moses is celebrating it with a big God kind of a, of a view in his mind. And see, we see here that that emphasis is made as it celebrates the parting of the Red Sea, the crossing of the Jordan by the nation. The Lord is the man of war. The Lord is his name. Look at verse 3. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. And the choicest of his officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deeps cover them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. And in greatness of your name, the excellent, your excellence, you overthrew those who rise up against you. You send forth your burning anger and it consumes them as chaff at the blast of your nostrils and the waters were piled up. The flowing waters stood up like a heap. The deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. You know, again, what Moses is doing is he's seeing God as the one who is part of this whole event. He's the one orchestrating. He's the one leading. So can we see in the events of our own life and the events of our own life as a college, where, where is, how, how do we acknowledge the greatness of God in this? How do we show that he indeed is the one who is working on our behalf and favoring us in this way and giving us strength along the way so that his reputation, his renown might be known? I think also of Deuteronomy 1.30, the Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did in Egypt before your very eyes. And then how does the Lord appear to Joshua in Joshua chapter 5? He's the, the, the undefeatable military leader, the captain of the Lord's host. Go with me to Psalm 136. Here's another perspective of just thankfulness and gratefulness to what God does on our behalf. Psalm 136. And here, as you look at the psalm, and if you have your Bible open or you're, you've got some digital form of it that you're looking at it, you see, the, you see immediately that what the psalm does is it, it takes a slice of Israelite history and then between slices it simply says, for his, love, his loving kindness is everlasting. So you look at, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods for his 
loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His loving kindness is everlasting. For to Him alone does great wonders, for His loving kindness is everlasting. To Him who made the heavens with skill, His loving kindness is everlasting. And so as you go all the way down through the psalm, you see creation, and you see the Red Sea's uh, celebration. You see the protection of God through the, uh, the wilderness wanderings. You see the settlement. You see all of these different slices of Israelite life being taken apart. And in the middle, it's for His loving kindness is everlasting. So can we say that today? You know, as we, as we take apart life, and we look at our season and we see all that took place with our teams. Can we say, His love and kindness is everlasting. And we celebrate that. And it's all about Him and how He was kind to us. And how He cared for us and how He provided for us through the ups and downs of a season. Then my mind goes in the New Testament to passages like 1 Corinthians 15. Go with me there. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. And here we're just celebrating the ultimate victory, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and a rather lengthy chapter that Paul, uh, under the Spirit of God's direction, uh, writes for us and is preserved for us. And you come to verse 50, Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, in the, at the last trump, where the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable. This mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable, but with, when this perishable will have been put on the imperishable, and all this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain, but in the Lord. I mean, can we celebrate this, this victory that has been given to us in such a way that we see it in the broader context of biblical history. And we say, yes, the ultimate victory is what has been provided for us by Jesus Christ. And we rejoice in that. And then finally, I go to Revelation chapter 19. And with this, I will stop and then turn it over to Coach Tuma. Revelation 19. And we see in verses 11 through 16 the coming of Christ, the ultimate victory. And I just love what we find here, and I won't read the whole statement, but then you, if you look at verse 15, from his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He treads the winepress with a, a fierce wrath of God the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now again, just we put it all in the context of what we have is ultimately submitted to and offered as a thanksgiving offering to the Lord for what He does in our lives. So how do we respond? How do we respond? I'm, I'm also reminded of what Paul says to the Romans. Do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance, long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Can we see in some way God's been good to us? You know, as, as I started the chapel thanking you for praying and partnering with us on behalf of my wife with regard to her surgery, and God has been good. And when I receive the goodness of God in any form, I'm saying, Lord, I want to repent. I want to repent of my stubbornness. I want to repent of my, my sinfulness. I want to repent of my, my self-will and self-determination. And I just want to surrender all of that to you. And so I hope that as we celebrate the goodness of God, in some way or other, will say, Lord, thank you. I want to walk in a pathway that truly honors and glorifies you. I want to repent. I want to, I want to glorify you by going hard after holiness. I want to love you with all my heart, with all my strength, with all of my might. So, again, how do these victories pale in light of the ultimate victory of Christ over sin and death? It certainly does pale. But at the same time, it's a gift. And we receive it as such. And we want to properly acknowledge our great God and Savior who's given us a gift. And so that's all we're doing 
in this moment. And I hope you'll catch that this morning and allow some of these texts of Scripture to develop for you. And hopefully I've been able to cast for you a, a picture of a big God. And we thank you. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for who He is and how He has provided for us and given us something so sweet like this to rejoice in. And so at this time, we want to acknowledge the teams and their accomplishments, and Coach Tuma is going to come and do that for us, and then I'll come and close it at the end. All right, thank you, Dr. Clem, for uh, just a perspective on what um, this means, how to celebrate these championships. But we do want to take a moment and uh, recognize the accomplishments of these uh, girls and the, and the effort that they put in. So I'm going to ask both teams to come up. So um, introduce to you now the newly crowned 2012 uh, Women's Volleyball National Champions. If they'd come stand up here, give them a round of applause. The whole, I want the whole team to come up. I want the whole team to come up. And also, for the first time ever in the history of the college, uh, 2012 Women's Soccer National Champions. You guys can I'm going to give just a mention a few of the awards that were received um, this year at, at the tournament. So um, there's a couple different levels of awards that are given out each year. We have the regional awards that were given out at the regional tournament. We have the national awards, the, the national tournament awards, and then the All-American. The All-American awards will come later, and, and we'll uh, wait to announce those uh, when those results are in. But at this year's tournament, um, the volleyball team who have just won their 12th overall national title and their seventh in a row. Um, they defeated Maranatha Baptist Bible College uh, three to one in the championship game. And um, in that tournament, we had two uh, team members that made all tournament team. That was Rochelle Buckland and Sarah Wild. Um, again, for the girls, they, uh, won their game four to one in the national championship game. Uh, I was able to make it for most of the game there. Um, it was an exciting, exciting game to watch. It was uh, back and forth, and then they, they dominated, basically, uh, especially in the second half. So it was, it was a great game and uh, fun to watch. Um, and we had, in the tournament, four um, players that were nominated for all tournament team, uh, Brooke Buffalo, Whitney Redmond, Rebecca Farrell, and Tori Hale. And uh, Tori, Tori also was named the, the player of the tournament. So, excellent job. Um, I think what, what you see up here, and, and for those of you that, you know, have played sports in high school and, and uh, you know, play sports here for the college, what it takes to, to get to this point, there's a lot that goes into that, a lot of hours. Um, They've been on campus, you know, since the middle of August, uh, practicing every day. Um, I don't see, I'll, I'll just say this, you, you don't get the opportunity probably to come and watch them practice. Um, some of the practices, you, you know, you'd be threatened if you came to watch them. But um, if you got to see them practice, a lot goes into what they do. And um, I've had the opportunity to, to walk through and spend some time watching them, and, and a lot of effort goes to get them to this point, and um, it, it's something that, uh, yes, we, we're thankful for the, the effort that they put in, and, and it's paid off for them. Um, and, but we are most appreciative of what God does here in the pursuit of excellence um, as, a, as a result of this. So I'm going to ask, the, the, let's give them one more round of applause. We'll have the girls seat. Sit. <clears throat> and um, the players can go ahead and have a seat, but th there are there's a small presentation that the, the team members would like to make to Dr. Clem at this time.
The women's volleyball team as a representation of Clearwater Christian College would like to present Dr. Clem with the 2012 National Championship banner. The 2012 women's soccer team would like to present the college with this banner. I do want to also say a word of thanks to our coaches, uh, Coach Bates and uh, Coach Denny, and uh, for those who worked alongside of them. And I just appreciate so much the determination to disciple and, and to use athletics in, in a very appropriate way. And, and so uh, we're grateful for the coaches and all the investment of time that they put in, and of course, uh, time away from family and travel and all those kind of things. So, so we're so grateful for that. Well, let me close our chapel out just uh, with a, a Thanksgiving send-off. All right, uh, it's probably the last chapel that we have. Uh, well, we'll have chapel, I guess I shouldn't say that. There is chapel Thursday and Friday, I guess. Is that right? All right, I don't want to make any premature announcements here so, uh, or things I have to apologize for or come back after. My wife always tells me, just live life in such a way that you don't have to apologize. And I say, okay. So I'm, I'm living that out right now. All right. But anyway, this is probably the last time I'll get a chance maybe to say something to you before you go off for your Thanksgiving break. And, and I just want to say that I hope that as you get back to be with family or friends, that that will be indeed a very refreshing, very relaxing time and that uh, your batteries will be recharged. I know many of you are, are just uh, pressed with assignments and tests and so on that are going on during this, this week. And, and I understand that and I understand the pressure that you're under. But as you get away next week, I trust that it'll be just great. It'll just be a refreshing time, a wonderful time, and that you'll use it in a way that indeed does glorify Christ and honor him in all that you do and all that you say. So be safe. You know, I want you to, as you travel, just please be safe. Don't text and drive. You know, do all the things you're supposed to do. Put your seatbelts on and just be careful. Be safe. We want you back. Be safe. Be a good testimony. And be a servant to your family and friends. You know, as you get home, it's not about you. It's about how you can serve mom and dad, how you can serve the family, and be an encouragement to them. And in whatever way that would be manifested or whatever opportunity that the Lord might put before you, uh, take advantage of it and, and look to the Lord for the strength, strength to do that. I'm going to give you an assignment, though. All right? Hey, I'm the president. I can do what I want. All right? So... Since the buck stops at my desk, all right, here's your assignment. I'm going to give you an assignment. I'm, real, I'm serious about this, too. I want you to read the book of Romans from now until the time you get back. Just take, just take a little bit of time each day. Read the book of Romans, all right? Then when you get back, we'll have a testimony time. We'll talk about what God taught you through your reading of the book of Romans, all right? So it's not a time to check out, but it's a time to engage. So read the book of Romans. And when you come back, we'll have a great time talking about how God used his word in your life to encourage you along the way. So go hard after the Holy Christ who will make you holy. All right? Go hard after the Holy Christ who will make you holy. Let's stand and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time, and we pray that you might indeed be celebrated as the great and glorious God. You have You've extended favor to us. You've been kind to us, Father, in so many different ways. Uh, to me personally, with regard to Kathy's surgery. To our college, with regard to the victories that our athletic teams are enjoying. With regard to the advancement department and, and some of the finances that we've been able to realize. You've been good to us, Father, for your loving kindness is forever. And we thank you, Father, for that. We lift our voice in praise to you and pray as we we plan and depart for our vacation time, for our Thanksgiving break. We pray, Father, that we might invest it and not spend it selfishly. And we'll thank you, Father, in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.